confession. I picked up this book looking for an epic fantasy read. It's not that. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel, we post writing tips, unboxings, book house reviews, and the occasional vlog. And today, I have another book review for you, and it is Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin. Now, as I have already said, a confession, I picked up this book looking for an epic fantasy read. It's not that. It was gifted to me, so I kind of didn't read the blurb. I just knew it was the story of the Targaryens, I presumed. It would be in Game of Thrones style, being character driven. Uh, it's not that. It is a history book on the Targaryens, kind of like the Silmarillion is to Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I got screwed over with that one. For that, it is my mistake. I have kind of done a review based on my opinions of those type of books, but if you really like the Silmarillion or if you like or really, really want to know the nerdy nitty gritty of the world that the author has made, you will enjoy this book and probably give it a higher rating than I do in the end. So if you're looking for a fantasy historical book, you will like this one. Secondly, I would like to point out that as I was reading this, the TV series Dance of Dragons did come out, which obviously kind of changed my views on this book. So. I've given it a review as just the book, but also given a review of whilst reading it with the TV series, because it really did change how I received this book. So there are three different reviews in here. There is the book by itself, the book with the TV series, and also a review of the TV series. So just a heads up, we're doing three reviews in one for one book. With that, I'll read you guys the blurb. Before we get into today's video, don't forget if you like what you see to subscribe to this channel. Your continuous support means a lot, so thank you guys so much. 300 years before a Game of Thrones, dragons ruled Westeros. A history of the Targaryen kings from Aegon the Conqueror to Aegon the Third. And on the back here it says, Queen Visenya rose and stalked from the hall without the king's leave. That night she mounted Vega and returned to Dragonstone. When her dragon passed before the moon, it turned as red as blood. A thrilling history of the Targaryens comes to life in this masterly work by the author of A Song of Ice and Fire, the inspiration for HBO's Game of Thrones. With all the fire and fury fans have come to expect from internationally best-selling author George R. R. Martin, this is the first volume of the definitive two-part history of the Targaryens in Westeros. Centuries before the events of A Game of Thrones, House Targaryen, the only family of dragon lords to survive the doom of Valyria, took up residence on Dragonstone. Fire and Blood begins their tale with the legendary Aegon the Conqueror, creator of the Iron Throne, and goes on to recount the generations of Targaryens who fought to hold the iconic seat all the way up to the civil war that nearly tore their dynasty apart. What really happened during the Dance of Dragons? Why was it so deadly to visit Valyria after the doom? What were Mega the Cruel's worst crimes? What was it like in Westeros when dragons ruled the skies? These are but a few of the questions answered in this essential chronicle as related by a learned maester of the Citadel. With all the scope and grandeur of Gibbons the history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, Fire and Blood is the ultimate Game of Thrones, giving readers a whole new appreciation for the dynamic, often bloody and always fascinating history of, the work of Westeros. Illustrated throughout by Doug Wheatley. You can see the illustrations, they are very cool and they are littered throughout this book. So this book covers around 157 years of Targaryen history from Aegon the Conqueror to Aegon the Third, just as he takes the throne. Some of those that rule in this time are more bloodthirsty than others. Some honestly have quite a good role of peace going throughout, which is quite refreshing to read actually, since with George R. R. Martin, one thing we are always guaranteed is blood. But with that, let's begin. My first con is names. There are so many. There are so, so many names dropped in this book, and I understand it is a history of a whole fantasy world. However, I can't remember all of them. And because we've gone through multiple generations of Targaryens, I can't remember which Mandley is which Mandley. I don't know which son we're up to. I don't even know where they all own anymore going through this book. Often you'd get a whole paragraph just listing the lords that had either gone to fight with this one, gone to fight with that one. There was a point during the Dance of Dragons where I honestly, someone turned cloaked, and I honestly couldn't remember whose side they were on to begin with, and I'd totally forgotten which side they'd turned to. I just knew one of the cities was being destroyed. Couldn't tell you who it was being destroyed for. 
Mm -mm. I totally lost count of the names in this book. And I did find that this even went so far as with the Targaryens themselves, because they repeat names often, because they name each other after their fathers and blah blah blah, I kept getting the Aegons confused. I kept getting all of them confused. And the only thing that saved that is that in the back of this book we have the family tree, which helps because you can work out roughly where you are. It also shows you who was the king, so who has sat on the Iron Throne. Also a really good indicator of where the incest would be happening, because we know there'd be a lot of incest. Con number two. So much rape. I understand rape and war have been known supposedly to go together. However, it's not always just women who are raped, and I'm kind of getting sick of reading about women being raped in fantasies based in medieval England. We could do without normalising the rape to go with death. Like, for women, you don't just seem to get killed. You get raped, then you get killed. Can we just have one? Please, the blokes just get one. I also understand this book has incest in, which I know is also a thing. We expect it from George R. Martin. We do expect blood. We expect rape. We expect incest. It's just there's quite a lot of it. We could just a little less. Great. This being said, on a good note, there are some powerhouse women in this book. We have Bela and Lena. They are Targaryen sisters who were born between a Targaryen and Valarian. Valarians rule the waves, Targaryens rule the sky, but the Valarians also can have dragons. And these girls, mwah, they are perfection. I love them. They're so sassy. They just do as they please. They sort it. If they think it's right, it'd be happening. And I absolutely adore that about them. This being said, this also kind of links to the history of Westeros. So like medieval England, as far as we are told, women aren't allowed to rule and women don't have much options. But there are women in this book who are trying to fight that and a lot of the war is literally just caused because the heir is female. Ooh, scary. There are a lot of powerhouse women so I did appreciate reading about those. Con number three. Because it is a history book, not an actual fiction book, there is zero characterization. So Upon reading it, I really didn't care who lived or died. I honestly didn't care less who sat the Iron Throne. I was more interested to see how they were fixing up the city, because at least I had a picture of Westeros in my head. Number four. It's long-winded. Again, because of the telling, there's no characterization, and because of all those names, there's so many bits that could be cut down. I mean, this book is over 700 pages. To cover 157 years of Targaryen history, some of that really could have been cut down. There's just so much in here. Now, again, this is from the point of view of someone who wasn't looking to read a history book, I was looking to read an epic fantasy. So if you want to read a history book, your opinion might be very different and I'm not telling you not to read it. But oh my god. But again, this is how I felt with the final Game of Thrones book as well. I also felt those last two books really needed edited down and there was so much where you're introduced to a character just for them to be killed by the end of the chapter. We may as well just not know who they are. There's no point. Now this brings us to the TV series in a little way. So as I said at the beginning of this video, the TV series Dance of Dragons came out whilst I was reading this book and apart from a very confused first episode of Dance of Dragons where I was searching through the family tree of this book trying to find which generation of Targaryen I'm up to because I'm like this isn't where I'm up to that could be that they've got the same name but I don't think it's that one it doesn't make any sense I could not work out where we were up to in this book it turned out it's because I hadn't quite got to them yet and then when I found them I was like oh got ya now the difference watching the TV series whilst reading this book made was they had character so because I'd seen these characters on the screen. I could then put personality and traits to them as I was reading them, so I cared more about those characters. So actually, I enjoyed reading it more after watching the TV series. Something else I should say is the TV series only covers one rule, and it's the Dance of Dragons, which is a war, the civil war between the Targaryens themselves. That's how long that is in the book. This is, the whole TV series is there. So before this point, I'd read that much already about Targaryens and there's this much after it. That's it. Honestly, after I'd watched the TV series and then finally found them here, I was like, 
that, that's it. That, that, that's that's all we get. Just that. That is the first series. It is page 356 to around 390. That's it. All in all, just reading this book without the TV series, I would give it 3 out of 10 stars. Honestly, it was so long-winded and as I said, I picked it up by mistake thinking it was an epic fantasy and it is not. It is a history book, it's all telling, there's no characterization. I did not care about these characters. Adding on to that, watching the TV series whilst reading this book brought it up to a 5 out of 10 stars. I enjoyed it far more once I got to the characters I actually knew about because they had personalities then. I could actually picture them in my mind. And that brings us to the TV series. How did it compare to the book? Now, I think we all kind of know my answer to this because I picked up the book in error of what it was and that is on me. So if you're looking for a history book and you want to nerd out on all the Game of Thrones nitty gritty details, you may enjoy this book, pick it up, have a little read. If you're looking for an epic fantasy and you want to escape into a new world, don't read this book. In terms of the TV series itself, it's quite accurate to the book. A few things happen in different places, but honestly, it's pretty spot on. I mean, because we're going off a history and you saw it's basically around 30, 40 pages of this book that is that full first series, they didn't have too much to go on. So they can fill in a lot of gaps because all this has is they were here, they fought there. This is the long list of people who were fighting all this long list who were dying, the usual. There was one thing that confused me quite a lot about the TV series and that was the actress change. So for part of the TV series, Rhaenyra and Alison are 16, so obviously played by teenagers. The TV series then actually skips 10 years ahead. Now the problem is it doesn't tell you this on the screen. There's nothing that tells you it's been 10 years other than trying to count how many children we've had, which is not an accurate thing to tell you because who knows how quick or how long in between they had children, but they change actresses to older people. Now, I'm not saying this was a bad choice because I guess putting 10 years on someone, it's easier to make an adult look 10 years older to be elderly than it is to make a teenager look like an adult. However, they didn't change up a lot of the male characters that much. I mean, Damon looks the same. That guy just does not age. The king ages dramatically at the end of the TV series. I mean, whew, some things happened to him. But it was quite confusing. But apart from that little detail, it was a rather quite enjoyable TV series. It was easy to watch. It's accurate to the book. So I personally didn't find, you know, sometimes you watch things and you're like, the book was so much better. Oh, you missed that. How did you miss that? I didn't get that with this TV series, so I think it's okay to watch at the same time as reading. The TV series also removes quite a lot of that rape that I was talking about in this book. You don't hear about it, sometimes you don't see it. So it kind of makes it just that everyone's fighting and killing each other rather than so much of the uh, rape and torture going on. There was a second odd bit in the TV series, and that is when Clubfoot and Queen Alicent are in her chambers because he often visits her to basically be her spy and to get things done. He can assassinate people through his contacts. He's basically a rat. And one thing that was odd was they gave Clubfoot a fetish or a kink. They turned him into someone who is attracted to feet, which there is nothing wrong with. But what is odd is there's none of that from what I can remember in this book. There's no mention of him having this kink or that Queen Alison shows him her feet in order to get information from him. Now, it's just more, it's added more characterization in here. So it's not really a problem that they did that, but it did feel a little bit like kink shaming because Clubfoot is not a nice character. And obviously Queen Alison's reaction to doing this basically a form of prostitution was partly in disgust for herself, but partly because of what she was doing for him to wank off to. But it did feel a bit kink shamey, which is kind of sad. Okay, it's just something I did notice that was different from the book that wasn't in there, which felt a bit odd to put in. So I'm not quite sure why, but that's the thing. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, comment down below. Anything I've missed out from this book, because it is a hefty read. This, I mean, look at my hand compared to this book. It'd be chunky. So 
I probably got confused mixing stuff. As I said, I was getting so confused with who's who. Too many people. Far too many people. All in all, I would give the TV series a 9 out of 10 stars. I did enjoy watching it and I did think it was a good ad adaptation. So reading the book alone, 3 out of 10. Reading the book with the TV series, 5 out of 10. And watching the TV series, 9 out of 10. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to see as soon as I upload, click that little bell down below. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or Tumblr. I post your own bookish pictures, as well as my writing tips and unboxings on there. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.